opportunity session. All right, so today's in today's agenda, we're gonna be first talking about volunteering in the context of your college application, then about what exactly counts as a volunteering opportunity, which we're gonna follow up with some specific examples of CS engineering opportunities, medical opportunities, law opportunities, business opportunities, and finally, we're gonna end with some Q&A. All right, yeah, so um, we can start off with the first slide importance of volunteering in the college application. Um, yeah, so um, first of all, when you're looking at a college application, there are multiple parts where you can talk about um, different volunteer work that you have done. Uh, for example, in the activity list, um, where you can mention all the different uh, sorts of extracurriculars that you have done, alongside with the UC prop number seven. Um, in addition to both these, uh, places where you can place your extracurriculars that you have done all throughout your high school. There's also the supplemental essay questions. Um, these supplementals, you can talk about uh, one particular activity that you did that you really enjoyed or something that was more, more of like a, something that was very close to you that you really enjoyed uh, writing about or you enjoyed doing in your high school time. Um, all right, next slide. So how do you find a volunteer opportunity or summer opportunities? Um, well, finding such opportunities is very uh, difficult. And I think it's okay to take that time to research and figure out which one's right for you because you wanna really find out which opportunity matches your interests, which, which opportunity you're most, most passionate about because in the long run, that will be the one that will help you out the most. Um, it is okay that your volunteer work does not uh, relate to your major uh, because um, it's, it doesn't matter if it is or if it isn't. And if it isn't, as long as you're really passionate about it and as long as there's a different story behind why you chose your activity, um, that is totally okay. In addition to all this, I think it is very crucial for a student to be extremely unique about what they do. I know a lot of different uh, students do different volunteer opportunities. Maybe like they go to research programs. Maybe they, um, you know, shadow a professor. Maybe they write a research paper. It's something that you need to be very unique about. And of course, everyone, a lot of people do all these um, activities, but what is going to make you stand out is what you want to target. And in these summer opportunities and these research opportunities, you want to make sure you find one key point that you can talk about, which stands out. Um, for example, let's say you're doing a research opportunity with a professor, and in the end, you end up getting an award for that for that activity. For example, like an award from a president or maybe like a mayor or something. Now that's unique, right? Of course, everyone did the activity, but you got an award for that. That's what stands out. So you want to try to be very unique as to what you do and what the results are and what you want to talk about in your application. Um, so what really counts as a volunteering opportunity? So um, people often mistake volunteer opportunities for um, maybe like selective programs that you have to apply for, write an essay, write your, give your transcript and all that. That's okay. Uh, that It doesn't necessarily have to be that. It's not always considered a volunteer opportunity. Um, it can be very simple as in doing like, like mentioned on the slide, like household chores. Um, this is something a lot of students wrote about, and you, you, this is a UPenn statement. Um, you can do very simple things like household chores. And it's also something that's very unique. A lot of applications, you talk about, oh, I did this research opportunity at Berkeley, or I did this um, shadowing this professor at you know Princeton. Um, but it can be very simple as like doing your chores. Maybe you are an older brother or uh, older sibling, and you are taking care of your, your younger sibling, as well as uh, your grades, your other extracurriculars, along with you know keeping the house running. Something as simple as that is also very unique and uh, stands out. Um, and again, in majority of the colleges, they go through this holistic approach 
And the solicitic approach means that it's viewed on the context of your opportunities, which basically means that whatever is provided to you, whatever you are um, able to get uh, is what's going to be viewed. If one student is able to go to Stanford and get their program done there, while another student can only do, um, for example, like like their household chores because they're so like overwhelmed with all the other, other stuff that they're doing, that's okay because when you when the admission officer looks at that application, they understand what you're going through and they understand what is provided to you, and that's why they view it based on what opportunities you've got you received. Um. If you go to the next slide, this is actually a quote from UC Santa Cruz admissions. Um, I'm just going to read it out loud. Freshman applicants are evaluated using a comprehensive review process that considers all aspects of a student's application, including grades, test scores, completed coursework, and extracurricular activities within the context of opportunities. Again, as it states here, all application or freshman applicants are evaluated using um, a very comprehensive process. Um, which not only considers their, oops, um, which not only considers their um, application, uh, they, they include their grades, includes their standardized testing, along with the coursework they have completed, the course rigor, and all the extracurriculars, based on what I just mentioned earlier with the context of their opportunities, meaning that whatever is offered to you, and if you maximized uh, the fullest potential um, is what they would consider. And they would not hold it against any other student if they didn't have the resources or if they didn't have the um, you know, ability to take those courses or those extracurriculars um, if they couldn't. All right, so let's get into some specific examples of First, starting off with CS and engineering volunteer opportunities. All right, so there are a variety of CS volunteering opportunities and the most common are teaching and mentoring. So yeah, you can volunteer at a local nonprofit or some other organizations to teach coding classes. You can even make your own nonprofit to do this. And you can also help underprivileged committee members and you can mentor at organizations like Girls Who Code and stuff like that. One more thing you could do is you could design web pages for local charities and what and sorry and libraries so you should remember that you can do stuff like that because cs really cs gives you the potential to create and there's a lot of things you can create that will help other people so you will eventually find a way all right now let's talk about engineering volunteering opportunities so there are a variety of types of these and the most common are mechanical and electrical engineering now, usually internships at companies show that you have knowledge and experience. Now, when usually when you say internship, you mean, you mean like it's a paid internship or an unpaid internship, but you're actually working for an official company. When I say internship in this context, it's a little bit different. This is like interning for a nonprofit. So that's technically counted as volunteering and you can fill that out on your, and you can, sorry, submit those service learning hours. So there's this organization called Engineering for Change and they had a project in sanitation, transportation, water, health, and many more things. And you, as an engineer, could help them do that. And you'll get service hours for that. And yeah, they may require a few prerequisites and maybe membership. So knowing someone in a specific company where you're trying to get an internship in helps because that worker can try to provide you with opportunities which aren't heard generally by the common public. And remember, only, oper only volunteering for a nonprofit only interning for a nonprofit organization is considered volunteering. Interning for a for-profit organization like a company is usually considered an internship and not considered volunteering. You can't submit our, you can't get service learning hours for that. Okay, now let's move on to medical volunteering opportunities. All right, so there are a variety of these and the most common are volunteering at your hospital or health clinic one example is the Regional Medical Center in San Jose and Washington Hospital, Fremont. You can apply for a medical internship program like KP Launch or the Indiana University Simon Cancer Center Summer Research Program. You can participate in summer medical programs. You can also do job shadowing, 
in which you just follow around the doctor while they work on their day to day routine. You can you know, volunteer at, nurse, at a nursing home or a homeless shelter. So if you choose to volunteer at a hospital or health clinic, you might be able to provide customer service to patients, answer phones and file paperwork, and help make patients feel comfortable. You also get used to the environment that doctors work in. So that will be beneficial to you in helping you decide if you want to become a doctor or not. Mm. Yeah, so to find these types of opportunities, you can usually go to a website, hospitals' websites and health clinics near you. They usually have information about this on their websites. You can also call and ask them if push comes to shove. Now, I'll briefly describe an example. Now, there's this hospital called Kaiser Permanente. Volunteers will be the key communication link between patients, families, and hospital staff. Volunteers will be part of a team dedicated to providing high quality health care and experience the medical profession environment at a Kaiser Permanente Hospital. High school students are not accepted at all locations, though, so you want to check to be specific. All right, let's continue. You can also participate in summer medical programs like the NLSC on medicine and healthcare. Yeah, as I said, job shadowing, and you can also do this. All right, so I'll hand it off to Justin Marbury for this section. Okay, so let's go over some law volunteering opportunities. So, all right. So law uh, law internships are a really great way to get exposure to law careers and see if they're right for you. So, um, an exp the experience will also be extremely helpful on your college application to demonstrate your interest in the field and prove that and prove that you're really interested in um, doing it as a profession. And law firms are kind of um, encouraged by the state government to hire high schoolers. Um, we have a list of law firm internships that you guys can view after the session. Um, yeah. And then, and then some DOI pathway programs. So what a DOI pathway is, it's basically uh, the aim of this program is to improve the recruitment efforts, um, offers clear, clear paths to federal internships for students from high schoolers throughout their postgraduate degree. So that's basically what DOI is, and it gives students a perspective into the inner workings of policy making in the government, paid internships, and can also lead to a full time job after they graduate. And finally, the National Student Internship Conference is basically uh, will allow the students to gain perspective into what it's like to be a lawyer. So they'll get to simulate a trial, visit law schools and get to interact with judges. Though this um, course is kind of expensive, if you're really interested in law, it's really worthwhile. Okay, I'm going to be talking about some really good business volunteering opportunities that you might want to consider if you are going to major in business. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the Berkeley Business Academy for the Youth. And this is one of the most prestigious um, programs for people who are interested in business. And it provides a lot of in-depth involvement for making business plans and the entire process that's involved around that. So you will get curriculum and instruction from really important um, professors and people who are actually involved in the business world. So you get a lot of exposure in that sense. And this really provides a lot of details on what making business plans entails and all of that stuff. So there are two different times that you can go for this. And the first session is from July 9th to 22nd this summer. And the second one is from July 22nd to August 5th of this summer as well. So if you one of the times don't work, you can also go to the other one. So there's a little bit more adaptability with this program. And the applications are due on March 17th. So make sure you are following that deadline if you are planning to apply for this. And this is um, on the more expensive end for internships or summer programs because it is $6,050. And there is an $80 application fee on top of that. So make sure you're really into the business pathway um, before doing this because if you end up doing this and then making the most of your opportunity, it wouldn't be a good use of the resources that you have, the money and the time that you've spent on this internship. So I would recommend taking this in the summer of your junior year so that you are able to have the knowledge that you would need to make the most of this experience. And this application does require quite a few components. So there is an essay that you would have to submit 
and two teacher recommendations and a transcript and you may have an interview so for the essay requirement make sure you look at the prompt well ahead of time and you really plan out the writing process because similarly to college essays you want to make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to write a really strong essay and then make multiple drafts of it so i would recommend creating a well detailed plan for that component and for your two teacher recommendations it's always better to get recommendations from your core classes which are like english science and math and if you do take business courses like for example, AP macroeconomics or just economics or anything like that, you would probably want to get a recommendation from that teacher so that the people who are looking through your application are able to see that within this business aspect, your teachers are really recognizing the effort that you're putting into that class. And it'll just um, show that you're really interested in doing business or whatever. And the um, the people who are reading your application will notice that and take that into account when they're considering you versus other applications. And for the transcript, since they require this, you want to make sure that you're considering that um, they do want good grades on this transcript. So make sure you do have that if you're planning to apply for this because it might be a deciding factor when it comes down to you and another applicant. And there's also an interview, so you want to make sure that you really know your stuff in case they do call you for an interview so that you're not kind of guessing and it shows that you're a really strong applicant. Okay, moving on to the second program, uh, we have Launch X, and this is a really good program because all high schoolers can apply and it's also online. So that gives a lot of adaptability, especially if you're traveling during the summer, like if you're going to India or something, you will still be able to attend this program. So that's a really good aspect of this. And the applications are due on February 15th, which is coming up really soon. So you want to make sure that you're, if, you're, if you're interested in this, you get started as soon as you can, because you, again, want to give yourself enough time to create a really, really strong application. And the session is going to be from July 3rd to August 4th, so that's the second half of the summer. So again, this doesn't conflict with travel or anything, so it should be fine if you are traveling. And this program is really good because it provides students with the resources that are necessary for starting their business. So if you have a really good business idea and you are very passionate about launching it and making profit and things like that and really setting up a good business, then this would be a really good program for you because you will get a lot of resources that for, you might not be able to learn from just Googling it or you might not be able to learn from like YouTube or from courses that you're taking in school. So the people who are helping you in this program will provide you a lot of insight on that aspect. And outside of these programs, there are quite a few things that you can do to excel yourself in the business aspect. So things that you could do um, are you can try reaching out to um, different businesses that you are you have been really I guess like things that you've been using a lot, maybe people who, maybe a business that has this product that you've been loving a lot and you're really passionate about helping that business, you could try calling them and seeing if they have internships available for high schoolers and just trying to find as many um, people that are willing to take internships as possible is a really great thing for people who are interested in this field. So I would definitely recommend doing that. And that brings us to the end of this session.